a single if I was to build a single family dwelling in that property, so take the other side off. If I was to just build a single family in that dwelling, we we wouldn't have any problem with what we're saying today. I guess I'm just a little bit confused on obtaining a permit um, for a two family and saying that my plot plan is insufficient that we don't know where the boundaries are, that we don't know that the that the boundaries have not changed since it's changed hands a couple of times since 2005, <clears throat> which I completely agree with you. Th that would sort of be null and void at this point. That the, that this the the piece of property that I bought, if I was just to obtain the permit for my garage, nobody would be asking me if those four points that we're saying it's 160 in the front, 100 or 200 in the back, and whatever the measurements are, that wouldn't be a problem. You under kind of understand what I'm saying? I, I just don't know. I can get a survey of the property again, and I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I'm just wondering if I <laughs> said, you know what, I don't want to do a two family, I'll just make it a single family. I, I think what Roger said to you earlier about mm -hmm. checking with your attorney who who guided you in purchasing this property and assured you that this was uh, a vested, grandfathered building lot. Mm -hmm. That is the proof that we, we would need. Would because... that be from the Registry of Deeds? Well, but hold on a second. You're back to the building inspector. The building inspector is the frontline zoning officer in all towns. The building inspector issues you a building permit for a single family residence. You're golden. You don't need the zoning board right. at all. Okay. So it sounded like he said he was going to grant it to you. And then he saw the upstairs and said, no, but that's his call. Okay. That that was my question. I was just wondering if, if I'm, I'm getting a little worried now that you're saying that that lot is not a, a lot that you can build on. If you take the two a two family out of it, so I'm glad to come back, and I appreciate your guys' time. I really do, and I'm at the mercy of you. I'm not. I don't expect to get a two family. I I really don't. I was under the assumption that two family and one family are the same. This is why I'm here. I'm not arguing with anybody. I just want to make sure that you're not questioning the law itself. That's all. That's all I'm saying. We would only be questioning it if what you wanted to do required a special permit. Okay. As, as Roger just said, if you decide you wanna go for a single family and you take it to the building inspector and the building inspector says, that's it, here's your building permit, you don't come to us at all. You only come to us if what you require yep. requires a special permit. Excuse and me. we require more proof than we have been given tonight that this is a grandfathered vested lot. Okay. So that I I guess I guess that was my that was my question. It, so it's a vested lot for a, a single family. We don't we don't know that at this point. Okay. All right. All right. That was my, that's that was you just clarified it. That was all that's all I wanted to ask. Is I was just trying to clarify that. That's all. So I mean, we don't have prejudice against it. We just don't know it. Yeah, no, that's okay. That that yeah. was my question. Now I, you're getting me worried. Like that, I just buy a piece of property that I can't even build anything on. You, uh, you, you. I understand that you can turn me down. On a on. Um, but I would definitely like to try to build a two family on it. Um, and you know, I hope it goes through. Um. So if I could have another meeting, I would really appreciate it. And um, if you guys could just tell me one more time exactly what you want me to get at the next meeting, I will try to get it. Roger. <laughs> I would suggest either your lawyer attend the meeting or give you a written memo, memo of law addressing the issue of whether the grandfathered nature of that lot extends to allow you to build under the two family dimensions of our bylaw. Yeah. So, 
if I could be completely honest, because that's what I am, I read the bylaws. This lot does not conform to the bylaws right now. No, uh, no yeah, I and I understand that. So this lot does not it it at all. It doesn't, you know, I think it was 220 feet of frontage. I can't remember all of them. It's not in front of me, but it has 20, uh, 20,000 additional square feet. It does not, it does not at all conform for a two family in Waitley. So would I need to apply or, or, no, or she's saying you need 25% of your, of your property to be low income for them to consider going into a two family. No, no, that's just one option. Oh, okay. Okay, there that's are options. That's not our only option. Sorry, this is my lawyer. Otherwise, that is my wife. <laughs> no, and but I don't, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to. We're requiring more documentation, but that's. But even if we got that documentation, I want to be very honest with you too. That's not a guarantee. Yep, and I understand that that. without the community housing bylaw. Um, advantages shall we say that we would grant a special permit for a market rate to family because you are deficient even right. if it's even if it would be um vested grandfathered for a, a, a building lot as a single family it requires more for a multi-family or a two-family and that's something we'd have to see and discuss yep so i knew that coming into this i already i already said like when you sent me the bylaws which i read like a thousand times and only remember half of it i was like oh geez i don't meet any of these criteria um so what i expected was to come to this meeting and basically have this happen which i think i got a little off course thinking that you guys were saying that this isn't a building lot at all um, but for a two family as it stands i understand that it definitely does not meet the bylaws of Wheatley as it stands right now i understand that so would I appeal that? I'm just wondering what the next step is. Just, just yeah. moving forward, would I appeal this and then go forward or, or or how do we move forward? Well, we haven't taken a vote. We haven't denied you. So there's no appeal unless there's a denial. Are you asking us to vote tonight? If we can, if we, if you want us to, we can vote. I guess that depends on how you feel. <laughs> no, I, I... I'm going to vote against it. I'm telling you right now. No, that's fine. I just want you to ask them what would make them consider approving us. Okay, so my wife says, what would make you guys consider approving this property? With the proper documentation. Is there even yeah. an option? Or is this not? Knowing that we're below a grant, a before, a below. Okay, if Krzyzewnik's ad said grandfathered for a two-family structure or two- or multi-family structure. It did not. Certainly include a single family. Okay. Uh, and your lawyer determined that was truthful, and he came and you came forward with the evidence of that truthfulness that would probably sway us. So it did not, it did, it, the, it was not listed as a two family, it was listed as a building lot. That's it. So then the, the grandfather aspect is really a. Um, I would say grandfather building lot, not two family. I'm asking you guys. I'm telling you, the grandfather aspect then is an apparition, it's a ghost. It doesn't, it's not going to help at all. So. Yeah. Then we'd just we're back to where you are with a better plan, and we could probably look at the better plan and yeah. probably deny it again because it's short. So yeah. um, I don't know what more I can say. So there's no consent. What I'm trying to understand is there's because we are short on frontage. You really won't even if we go through all these hoops. You won't consider approving us. It's what difficult. I it's difficult to do that because it creates a precedent that the town bylaws deliberately wrote to avoid. Yeah. Okay. No, that but there sense. is, that but there is the possibility that you could. You know, you wouldn't have to conform to those dimensional requirements if, as the planning board's bylaw has said, 25% of the units are affordable by the state guidelines. So it's a two family up there. So that means one of them would have to be. Yeah. So that that is that's that's you know a serious option. I, think okay. he's also, the, I, don't, I don't think he's too interested in it because he hasn't seemed to be asking. No, I'd be, uh, to be honest with you, I, I was stuck on the, the building lot part, um, not the two family. I was stuck on the building lot. I am, I am more than happy. The reason I built this 
It's that people move in. I am more than <laughs> to conform to Section 8 or whatever you guys are talking about. I I, I mean, that's the whole reason. Um, now, I'll ask a question to Judy, the planning board. Wouldn't he need a brand new application? This application doesn't talk about affordability. So how could he possibly be approved on this application? Well, I think that's pretty much up to you. But if I I don't know if you've seen the wording of the bylaw, but it requires that at least 25% conform to the definition of subsidized housing inventory. Right. Yeah. And there was this would not uh, be fair. This would not be fair to the neighbors who signed off on this already. To then say, yeah, so, and by the way, we switched it at the meeting, and you didn't have notice. Yeah, and I think yeah, that's so true. I, I, think that, I honestly think that's true. Oh, is there, there any neighbors? Is there any neighbors to... at the oh, meeting who would like to oh, talk? We, we really need to speak one at a time on a Zoom. They overlap a lot. Sorry. I I would assume that the new application would have to indicate, or that you would need to see an application that that conforms to this bylaw which is a commitment to do that yeah. Um, yeah i would i would agree i think we need a, uh, he needs a brand new application if he's going to pursue the option would the application that was turned down and this is just a question is the application that was turned down uh for the two family uh dwelling and sent the zoning is would that be a different application or the same the same form it's the same form but we're not going to turn this down. We're going to ask you if you are willing to withdraw it. And then that protects you because then you don't have a denial against you. Yeah. So do you want to withdraw I'm, it? A, I'm here to ask questions. I'm at the mercy of you guys. And I, I understand that. I, so the, so here's something for you and your wife to talk, think about. You can take a minute or two if you want. Do you want to withdraw this application and then come back anew when you're ready with the affordable withdraw, application? Withdraw without, withdraw without prejudice. Exactly right. They're going to deny us it. Yes. That would be the best bet. Is to withdraw. Um, can I ask one question before I do? Yeah. Of course. Um, I don't know if all the abutters are on the meeting. I'm not sure. No, they're not. No. No. Okay. Would that uh, make a difference if all the abutters were on the meeting saying? Not that really. No, because it's legal notice that gets published in the newspaper too that has to have all okay. that language. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I guess the smart thing to do would be well, to. I think what were you asking that because every single one of our abutters signed. Yeah. Signed off and said it, they were okay with us doing a two-family. Is that what you were asking? That that's my question. I, I I'm. So uh, so, what we had we went around to every single neighbor and told them what our hopes were to do with this and talk to them and signed it and i believe that he submitted that so you have every single signature of our neighbors saying it's okay to put a two family there so yeah, but that's the not the same as being a two family with one of them being no no, no but what what i'm saying is basically what i heard is you guys will not approve us for a two family because we don't have the proper we don't have the proper frontage so even with all of that would you still deny us if it were affordable no 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 i know we would have to go back i'm if we kept it just at market value and did not go to affordable you guys would look at this and say it's too small you're under all the requirements and you would deny it even if all all of our abutters are saying a-okay that's correct because your abutters i'm sure you're lovely people and i i don't say that lightly it's it's not personal it's what the bylaws say yep. Yeah. And and Roger has already told you that he would vote against it. I am not persuaded, given that the bylaw is very strict with that. But there is this option. I don't, you know, Bob is our other member, and I I don't. Bob is not comfortable with the plan that he's seen, but I don't want to speak for you, Bob. I mean, I, I I'm not comfortable with the plan. I don't. I also aren't there risks if either the town meeting does not approve the planning boards um, there are indeed. <laughs> or the attorney general rejects it. Yes. And so that there... was my point that these applicants need to understand that this is a, this is conditional. Um, there, are risks, there are risks even pursuing that. Just want. Yes, there are. Yeah. 
risk pursuing but, if but you pursue the that, affordable option because it has not been approved by town meeting okay and All it right. has not been signed off on by the attorney general yep so i mean you can if you wanted to be a hundred percent safe on that you can wait until those two things happen and then you require a special permit, but the dimensional requirements that you okay. don't meet now can be waived. Okay. Yep. All right. So I guess um, we would like to withdraw. When, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Withdraw. withdraw. So withdraw and then come back. And so I think what we'll do is we will wait until that town meeting and the the attorney general and then in that event we will speak to the lawyer and oh wait all right that... i'm being i'm confused for one second that <laughs> so withdrawal if i withdraw now so say i say we're not doing the affordable housing we, which i'm we can move forward with our single family as long as you go to the building inspector they don't need to be involved and then if in the event they approve this town meeting then in the town meeting they approve it then we can go back so can i ask three apply all right well let me ask one more question is if because i did read the bylaws and i don't remember everything but say i get the permit for the single family which i will get and then i go back to you guys to try to obtain a, a two family the bylaws right now say and correct me if i'm wrong that if I get a certificate of occupancy for a single family dwelling, the way the bylaws, and I could be wrong, but they say I have to wait 10 years to change that use. Is what that correct? page are you looking at? I'm not looking at any page. I'm going with my memory. <laughs> ask, ask Bob. He knows I wasn't good in school. <laughs> um but yeah I, what i was reading is if you already have a dwelling that so say i get a co for whatever yeah. i'm building over he's, there he's talking about converted dwellings 171 hyphen 21 point thank you thank you yes bottom. so i would have to wait the 10 years bottom to... of page 7 uh 37 so now we're getting into a little confusing here i'm not so sure i want to give advice on this and, and, and layered in with what the affordable bylaw says which i haven't i read once but like you I haven't memorized it. And so you may want to consult with your lawyer on those on these somewhat esoteric points. Yeah. I just want to make sure that if I turn it down and I go for a single family, which I will get, and then I do that. And then when I come back to you guys and say, oh, and I, I, you know, even under the affordable housing, um, you say, oh, well, you have your certificate for occupancy and you cannot, you have to wait 10 years. So you better, check, yeah, you better check it out. Some cases are easy. And some cases are more difficult. This this is uh, morphing into a more difficult case. So you got to have some solid legal advice in your corner. Yep. No, I'm just asking questions. That's all. I, understand. I just don't want to back myself in the corner. That's all. That's what I'm asking. Question. You. That's a, that is a good question that you asked. Okay. Thank you. So you are officially withdrawing your application without prejudice. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, do we, wait, De Deborah, do we still need that in writing? We we have haven't we done email or something? Yes. These are Zoom meetings. Yes. If you could put that in email and send it to me or to Mary, that would be great. Send it to us both. Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Green. Good luck. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good luck with the project. Good night. Okay. So we have the Z the zoning board has some um, organizational business. Yes. Let me take the lead on this if I could. So I wanted to um, uh, congratulate Deborah on her fantastic service this past <laughs> year as acting chair. So much so that <laughs> when I talk to her, I want to nominate her to be the permanent chair. Um, and so I think she is willing to accept that. And, and we did check with um, with Brian before he left the administrator's post. And he said the way to do it is this exact way with a vote of the board. 
with a vote, actually with a vote of the permanent members of the Three board. members, correct. So, correct. Bob, if, if you want to second that, it's not too late to change your mind, Bob, if you would like the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I responded to your email. Yes, asking, yes, you did. <laughs> so, very succinctly, mm -hmm. um, I, I second the nomination of Deborah as chair. Okay, so okay. all in favor of me in as chair for now. Right. Okay, so now I would like to make a motion to have Roger become the vice chair because of his indispensable knowledge and wisdom that we saw on evidence tonight. Um, Second. Okay, okay all in favor. All right, the ZBA has been reorganized. Cool, very cool. I don't believe, Mary, do we have anything for next month? We do. Uh, I will be sending you a, an ad for it. The, um, I just picked it up from town offices today for the revisiting of the Dory Mead. Uh, ah, yes. Okay. 27 Masterson Road. Yes. They thought they didn't need the special permit for a two family there after all. But then the building inspector, some things got so no, I've talked to him at some phone. point. He he didn't understand exactly what their plans were when in, in the beginning. So he said, Well, you should have continued to they were someone who withdrew, as I right. be, believe. And because they thought they were all set with the building inspector, it turns out no, he they need to finish up with the ZBA <laughs> on yes. this question. Okay. So that'll be uh for uh First Thursday in March, I mean in April. April, yeah. When is that? So that would be the 4th of April. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to discuss? Deborah, I just would say that, you know, once I get into um, spring track, the problem is the weather. Yes. And our, our meets are on Mondays, which is really good for me in so many ways. But um, the weather this past I you know, know. 2024, I can't predict. So my availability might, and if Fred or or, Deb, uh, or um, Kristen can. Yes. Um, yeah, I thought we'd see Kristen tonight. She did say that she was available. So I think that is going to be really important for all for the alternates um to 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 be what here. are we talking about here? That Bob, because of Bob's track, um, his coaching, that and sometimes, sometimes the weather gets and the, the weather is further exacerbated by the fact that um there are so few bus drivers now that you can't just automatically change to the next playable date because that school may not be able to get a bus. Yeah. Um, and that's happened time and time and time again. And, so and are, you're saying might, you're normally scheduled to do that on Thursdays? On Mondays. On Mondays. And that, that should be fine for Thursday meetings. But I just wanted Deborah as chair to understand that sometimes I got no control. It just, it happens okay, when it happens. Okay, so we would need backup from the, yes. the, the other two members. Yeah. And I get paid to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, we get that. We get it. I get it, Bob. Um, okay. So um, we have a, the recording didn't start until later. So I, again, I am very sorry about that. I'm so used to working with Zoom where I would never record. In fact, it's a, 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 a duty not to record that it doesn't come naturally to me. So uh, I, I'm going to ask for our next meetings that somebody, you know, yell to me. I'll put a, I'll put a sticky up there again, but I, I do apologize for that. That's on me. I, 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 guess you, I think you relied on me doing it. And I forget yeah. about it. That's okay. I mean, I'm forgetting. So it's just, it's so ingrained on me not to record because yeah. of confidentiality that I, I just don't do it. After minutes? we're done with the recording of the meeting, I, I have a procedural question I'd like to okay. ask when we're done. Do we have well, any minutes to review? Any minutes? Not no. right now. Okay. All right. Okay. Did you want to ask your question, Fred? Or I'll wait till you're done with the recording. Okay. I will. 